But if I'd known this 20 years ago, I could have saved myself a whole lot of pain. Hi, it's Midnight Mule, and I thought I should do a little video on tummy ache, <laughs> on having a bad stomach, because I found out anecdotally that that's not uncommon with people with Asperger's. And uh, possibly one reason for that is we do tend to be affected more by anxiety than possibly the average neurotypical. I, I used to be in denial about that when I found out I was Asperger's and then my wife said something about I'm often anxious. I was thinking, I'm not anxious. I, I don't get anxious about things. I'm not a worrier. But then when I looked up the definition of anxiety and thought about things, I thought, oh yeah, actually, by definition, I suppose you could say I do get anxious about a lot of things in life. It might be just meeting people or being in a, a room with other people or having to get some public transport being somewhere on time, loads of things I think can cause Aspies to get anxious to a higher degree than it would a neurotypical. Anyway, this video, a couple of things I need to say to start with, none of this is medical advice nor is it dietary advice, it's just my opinions and my experience. Secondly, I'm going to mention a few products. I'm not sponsored by any of these manufacturers, I'm not getting any kickbacks, it's just my experience again. So. If you want to recommend other products or say how bad some of these manufacturers and companies are, that's fine. Just do that in the comments. I'm just saying what I feel. So, um, yeah, back in, oh, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago, I started sometimes getting quite a bad uh, tummy, stomach sometimes. I think the first time I noticed it was after a really spicy pizza, and I do like spicy food, and that maybe took several days to go away, but then I, I kept suffering with a stomach that it, it just really hurt the pain. So I eventually went to the doctors and I don't remember the whole conversation, of course, or any of it really, but I ended up with a prescription for, and I may say this wrong, Lansoprazole, which I think is quite a common thing that people take for, it's just to do with acid in the stomach, I think. So when I started taking these tablets, and I think it was twice a day, I think it was before breakfast and before like the main evening meal, and that really calmed my stomach down and my stomach pain went, so that was great. It was on prescription and I had to pay for the prescription. So every, I can't remember, every two or three months, I'd get a whole load of boxes that would then last me for that period of time. But for various historical reasons, I don't, like taking medicine or I certainly don't want to be dependent on any sort of medication so I kept when I was feeling okay I'd stop taking the tablets and I might be able to go sometimes a couple of weeks feeling fine but then something had happened and my stomach could be hurting again so I'd have to start taking these tablets again so I then have to go back to get more of these tablets on prescription and I asked the doctor about is this going to get better and the doctor said you're probably going to be on this for life these tablets and it's just the way it is some people just need to always take these because of their stomach and at the time we didn't know it was aspie so we didn't know there was other anxiety factors anyway the my family for the last 15 years or so that is the wife and kids once or twice a year would go away on holiday without me it was a nice break for them and a break for me because holidays are not a nice experience for me generally and they were happy to like for example they might just go to uh, my mother-in-law's and they'd hang out there for a week and that was fine she lives in nottingham there are things to do there for kids so in the uh since i was a kid every morning i used to have rice krispies for breakfast with milk on it and then in the evenings what we called supper i'd have shreddies and milk and that went on for years and then after a while I realized it's nicer if I mix them up so I'd have shreddies and rice krispies for breakfast and then the same at supper time. And then as life went on I gradually started experimenting with different cereals and whereas some people might have two or three Weetabix say for breakfast I would have Weetabix and then add some shreddies and corn flakes and rice krispies for a while I threw in some Cheerios as well and having lots of cereals together just tastes so much better than just having a bowl of just cornflakes with just rice krispies for example so that was pretty much a big part of my diet every morning i'd have the cereal every evening i'd have the cereal back to the holiday so my family went away on holiday and rather than have cereal just randomly i thought i'm going to go to the local farm shop and have a cooked breakfast so there's a cheerbrooks nearby 
and I had a cooked breakfast and that was very nice. And then because the family on holiday, I thought it was okay for me to kind of pretend to be on holiday. So for three days in a row, I had this cooked breakfast. And then I realized that my stomach wasn't hurting anymore. I mean, there's always this underlying pain when I wasn't taking the medication that my stomach could hurt. And it's like, my stomach was fine. And the only thing I could think was different was I was having cooked breakfast rather than the cereal. But of course, I can't afford to have a cooked breakfast every day and it might not be good for me anyway. So then I figured out oh, it must be the cereal. Maybe I've got some sort of wheat intolerance. So I then tried cutting out various cereals, one at a time and then two at a time. But that didn't fix it and I still had a bad stomach ache. And then eventually I tried cutting out the milk. So I just had, I tried cereal without any milk, just the dry cereal, which is better than nothing, but it's not great and it can dry your mouth out. And so I was really disappointed when I found out it was the milk causing me issues because I like milk and I like my cereal. So I would sometimes then have cereal knowing that I might hurt a little bit later. And I, I checked online and at the time I figured I came to the conclusion that wasn't actually lactose intolerant for various reasons, but I could be wrong. But I did experiment. I found I could still have cheese all right and I could have ice cream. So I tried several mornings in a row having ice cream for breakfast, loads of ice cream, and I was fine. So I wasn't quite sure what was going on, but I knew I had to miss out milk. Now, one of my kids has a problem and can't have milk and they say they are lactose intolerant and they have this thing called, let me see that, it's, it's a coconut milk. And so I tried this and it was horrible. I did not like it at all. It was really nasty. And I thought I'd rather not have this pretend milk. I'd rather not have anything than have the, the pretend milk. So again, I'm still without milk. And then I saw an Aspie post, and I'm sorry, I can't remember who said this. It was about a year or so ago. Somebody recommended this stuff, which is called, uh, it was Dream Rice. I can't tell you who makes it. Just from a local supermarket. Me, I, I should know who makes it. Um, and it was very, it was like very thin milk. It was a lot better than the coconut milk. Uh, but it was, I, again, I didn't like it, but at least that put me on to trying other rice milks. So I tried a load of different rice milks and I eventually tried this one, Alpro rice. And to me and my old unsophisticated taste buds, this tastes pretty much exactly like milk. So whereas the other white liquids were a bit rubbish, this was great. And so I'm absolutely fine having the Apro rice as a milk substitute whenever I have a cereal, which I don't have it for breakfast anymore. I, I just have it sometimes in the evening and it's fine. The only thing is you can't use it as a milk substitute in a lot of cooking. So for example, you get something in the UK called Angel Delight, which I like having sometimes and making it with milk is really nice. It may hurt my stomach a bit making it with this rice milk is just a brown liquid rubbish and so uh that's no good at all so oh and the upshot of all that of course is i don't take this uh the lansoprol anymore which is great so whereas the doctor was you're going to be on this for life and i assume they get some sort of kickback for every prescription but i maybe don't know that it turns out all i had to do was mess about with my diet cut out various foods and it did take a few weeks, I guess, to get it down to being the milk. But once I found that, I was okay. And it's made such a difference not having to be on these tablets and dependent on them. There are other foods that can trigger my stomach, like spicy foods can, which is a shame because I do like spicy foods. And uh, if I have a fair bit of certain alcohols, and it's not the same as a hangover, I know what a hangover is, but it can sometimes trigger my stomach, which makes it quite painful for a few days. But what I do, for example, the spicy food, sometimes I'll eat something knowing I'm going to be feeling bad for a few days afterwards. But for me, it's worth it for a one-off because I don't want to go my life without having nice spicy food. Oh, and there's one more thing I have. I should have had this ready. So there's a product in the UK, I don't know if it's global, called Rene, which helps um, with acid reflux and stuff. So it's not as powerful as the Lansoprol, but it can it can help reduce it and re reduce the acid and it can feel OK. But it's it's moderately expensive, depending if you have to have it a lot. So I'm always up for seeing is there a cheaper option? And I found this at the local 
uh, supermarket, buy Sadol. And this turned out to be like two or three pence a tablet. And often at night, because I'm feeling a bit dodgy in my stomach, I just be sucking on one of those as I go to sleep. It might be in my mouth for an hour or two, I guess, before it eventually disappears. And that's fine, and that's me sorted. So the upshot of all this is I'm not dependent on this medication Lantaprol. I get these things, I don't know, I might have them 15 times in a month, let's say. So we're talking, I don't know, 50, 60p, something like that. I just need to be careful with my diet and my stomach's okay. And this may be all blatantly obvious to everyone watching, I've no idea. But if I'd known this 20 years ago, I could have saved myself a whole lot of pain and effort. And so anyone who's watching this, if you sometimes get bad stomach pains, you may put it down to something in your diet, but it, it may be worth just trying cutting out different foods. Uh, this may this is probably obvious to most people, but it wasn't obvious to me. And sorry if the video is a bit long. Thanks. Bye.